Good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us on an unplanned stream. Today, I thought we'd just stroke the cat for the next six hours. I can't actually reach my mic because the cat's on my lap and the mic is too far away. Um, yeah, <laughs> thanks, Mark. Cameraman Mark. So right now we have no Mark because he's messing around with my, uh, my thing. There we go. Anyway, hello, everybody. Hello, Floppy. Floppy's we, being lap cat <coughs> this evening. We need a floppy cam. I know. Look at his like, cute oh, little look at his face. face. You know, like a little this is like a premium sitting position. Like a mini lion. This is a very premium. Look, look at this little cat. So, so we were out today. We were. And we were driving back this afternoon, a couple of hours ago, and had that, oh, Sunday, isn't it? Live stream. Oh, shit, it's moment. Sunday again. And oh, um, oh, Sorry, floppy. There we go. Now I can video switch. We had two choices. Choice A, we do one. Choice B, we don't do one. But we really wanted to do one because we like it. <laughs> we like live streaming. Because it's fun. So we thought, what should we do it about? And uh, then we thought, I oh, know, let's do it about nothing. Hmm. Which is kind of what we normally do anyway. But at least we come up with a title and a thumbnail. Um, but today we didn't. So no. um, James hastily threw together a thumbnail in the car. <laughs> that took an entire three seconds. <laughs> with nothing on it. And that was that. Here we are again. Yes. Uh, no Sam tonight because he's ill. God damn it. So Sad. last week he was gallivanting. This well, week he's falling apart. Are those texting me? What's he texting? Probably me? texting you abuse. Oh, it's because I cut him off two minutes ago. <laughs> so, um, sorry, Sam. say hello in the chat. Let us know you're watching. It's yeah. nice to see from you all. To see from you all, hear from you all, whatever. Brain's not working. Not enough coffee today. Um, we'll start off with a quick question that's just come in. A very important question. Not sure if this was answered before, but does Flop actually belong to someone here or is he the studio cat? He is the studio cat. We have a cat flap he, in the front of this building, yeah. and he lives in these yeah. rooms. There, there's at least two cat beds in every room. He never uses them because he just sleeps on all the expensive shit. Yeah, uh, <laughs> he's got food everywhere, water everywhere. He lives in the studio. He can come and go as he please, as he pleases at night. Um, I spent a good three months of my life when he first started turning up trying to find his owner, um, and... As far as we know, his his owners moved during COVID and just didn't take him. That's about the only conclusion we can come to. Hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know why you do that because he's a beautiful boy. He's so friendly and cuddly. <coughs> yeah, and um, <clears throat> so he lives here now, don't you, Flop? He Lucky does indeed. Boy. Yes, we've got lots of people watching the stream whose names I haven't seen in a while. Jim Davis, if that's the Jim Davis, Ooh. that'd be interesting. Hello, Jim Davis. Nice to see from you. Why? Why nice can I not? Why you. can I not talk today? <laughs> I think it's because the that. cat is on me. It's because cat... we're knackered. Because it's been a really, <laughs> really busy week. It has been um, an insanely and, busy week. Yeah, and it kind of it hit me at about four o'clock this afternoon. And if I can be in bed by nine tonight, I'll Perfect. be really happy. It's been a busy, busy week. Look at flop. Hello, flop pause up. I'm going to be stuck here forever. Good. I might never get to go home. Yep. So what's happened this week? So this week has been interesting for various weeks. We, do you know what? My brain is just not working. I cannot English today. I don't know for various weeks. I don't know what it is. It's just mean, like my, my. I think of what I'm thinking of saying, and then it's just like, bleh, just you, word do, vomit. Do you mean for various reasons? I do. That cool. is what I mean. So one of the main reasons, and we posted this on Discord just a moment ago, is that. Firstly, Floppy exists, which is obviously very important. But secondly, we have started shipping our little baby speakers, the Mum 6. Yes. So these are, for those of you uninitiated in Mum theory, these are the little two-way monitors. And it, and, is, and it is Mother's Day, so you need to know this. It is Mother's Day, and with my one remaining hand, because the other one's stroking the cat, I will put a photo of a little Mumsy on the screen. So look at that baby. Uh. So we began shipping them this week. They are sounding phenomenal and that is both my own opinion and the opinion of a gent who got them what two days ago three days ago thursday whatever that was whatever a that few is. days ago um basically we traveled over to oxford oxford just outside oxford uh to deliver some mum sixes to shane so basically this is shane let me get the photo there we go Yay. so 
lovely dude, Shane. He's uh, just wearing the same clothes as always because, yep. you know. The stereotypical Mark Jumper well, and James Black hoodie. Laundry is for amateurs. So let's first of all cover who is Shane? How do we know Shane, Mark? Uh, well, we uh, so Shane has got the smallest room we have ever <laughs> set up a pair of speakers in. I think it's about three metres by two and a half metres. And he went on, obviously he had lots of acoustic problems in the room because small rooms are generally a nightmare. He's got an angled ceiling in there as well because it's in a sort of gable bit with uh, Velux windows. Um, and he went on Yesco Lohan Acoustics Insider on his course for treating small rooms. Mm. Um, and it's one of the smallest rooms I've ever been in, and it's one of the best-sounding rooms I've ever been in mm. by far, and I think you will agree. It, so that It's has, one of those rooms that when you go in it, it disappears. Yeah. It doesn't sound of anything. Yeah. Which He's is what done you want. An amazing job. To me, it sounds I've I've worked in a lot of studios in London and Shane, your room um just sounds better than a lot of them. It mm. it really does. Super, super top job. Mm. Um so that's that's kind of how we, we were introduced. It was through Yesco's channel, and I think Shane had been introduced to Yesco's channel through our channel. Um so it's all kind of yeah, it's all kind of tied in as the so best things are. Let me load up a couple of photos of Shane's room. Okay. So, can you see that from there, Mark? Probably not, because you were at a weird angle. Yeah. Um, so, Shane has a pretty tight room. It's in an upstairs kind of back room of his house. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a typical sort of small spare bedroom. Typical British studio. tiny bedroom. Um, oh, Floppy's moving. Please don't stand on my shit. Thank you. Yummy. Um, and basically, he... I think this would have been quite a challenging room to treat because it's so tiny you know, yeah. I think it, it would naturally throw up a couple of, you know, challenges. But the the acoustic work that's been done inside this room is phenomenal. So he's got lots of GIK panels. Mm. Um, I think he said he made some of the grey ones as well. Correct me if I'm wrong, Shane, I can't remember. But um, yeah, some of them I think were, were made by him as well. Um, and he did all of the treatment himself following the guidance of what he found of on Yesco's, Yesco's channel. Yeah. Um and has done a pretty amazing job. Like it, it genuinely is one of the best sounding small rooms I've ever heard, or not heard because you can't hear anything because it's <laughs> yeah, you know, it does anechoic just, almost. Yeah, it does just disappear. It's, it's um, really good. And most importantly, it looks cool and has a really nice vibe. You don't feel like you're going into like a padded cell. No, it's, yeah, uh, you don't feel like you're in a tiny room. Yeah. Um, so Shane has just said they're all GIK. So my yeah, apologies. They're all cool. GIK panels. Um, but again, yeah, really, really nicely done. Um, There's something about GIK panels. I don't know what it is because all the whatever acoustic panels you buy from pretty much anyone, they're all basically the same thing. They're all a wooden frame with insulation inside covered in fabric. That's what they are. Hmm. But there's something about the GIK ones, I don't know what it is, um, that they just work. Don't they, they really and they're do. they're really reasonably priced hmm. as well. Um Yes, you can probably build them yourself a bit cheaper. Um, but I don't know. When we went into the KMR demo room in the, in the sort of cellar in there, mm. which is a square room just treated with GIK yep. Yep. Um, panels, and it's just like, okay, room, <laughs> room sounds great. Um, mm. So, yeah, yeah, wise, wise choice there. They're really good. Um, but, yeah, I was, I was quite gobsmacked at how good it sounds. Yeah, in and there. then obviously... Uh, we didn't get a chance to hear the monitors that he had in there before, but we know what they sound like. So they were Yamaha HS sixes, was it? I think so. Yeah, six sevens or eight. Six one sevens or eights. I believe it was sixes. Um, so he's basically gone from HS sixes, obviously the same size bass driver as the Mum six, up to the Mum six. Um, and yeah, we've already had some pretty decent feedback on that, haven't we? Um, he, com I don't know if you saw it, but he commented on Discord only a moment ago saying right. that they sound phenomenal. Cool. So that's a lovely bit of feedback. That's good. That's what it's all about. Um, and there was a, another pair of Mum 6s that we delivered today. Um, yes. So the second pair have gone out. Um, and they are also sounding rather nice. So that was a completely different room. That was an untreated Totally untreated room. Yeah. Um, basically a... Bit, bit a, bass heavy. Yeah. Was it down there? But thanks to like the eq on them and that kind of thing we could get around that so the reason why it's untreated is the person that bought them is a school music teacher composer 
um, and he wanted to basically get some high end speakers to to do his com- compositions and stuff like that for school. Mm. And to be fair, despite the fact there was nothing in that room, they didn't sound bad. They, no. they sounded pretty good. Yeah. I was surprised. I mean, there was a bit of a bass build up because the the setup was kind of quite far into the corner of the room yeah the desk is in the um, corner and the speakers just have to be on the desk they just have to be there's no yeah. there's no way around that um and that's often not ideal but and it was they were very bass heavy when we first yes um fired up the old yeah you never need like subs in there i don't no. think but again just put them on preset two on the dsp where the bass is rolled off a little bit higher mm. and that and that fixed that problem and already paul was playing back a mix and hearing things that he needs to change yeah, so yeah, literally that's, that's just from, like from ten, the... That's after like 10 minutes of... Um, so yeah. that's... Again, Which, that's, interestingly, that's perfect. Um, both Shane and the other guy, Paul, have both said that, mm. like, straight away. Yeah, you know, and as soon as you... that, and, yeah, and then you do, and then it translates. It's all about translation, basically. Definitely. And being able to hear mm. how, you, how you can improve your mixes. Um, and translation, which we again we we always say is the only measurement we really care about. It's percentage of revisions you mm. get, um, and how how your work translates to other systems, isn't it, Flop? I'm yes. just I'm waiting for Floppy to reply, but he's not even facing the right way. So yes, it's so is. rude. So yeah, it was great to meet Shane. Uh, great to see Paul again, who came for a demo here mm. on uh, it was Boxing Day, I think, wasn't it, or just after it was around yeah. around, about, around about Christmas time. Mm. Um, so if you've ordered a pair of Mum Sixes, they will be on, and we're not delivering them because we obviously can't deliver all the way around the world. Um, production run one, had the first production run has completely sold out now. Um, me and Nigel have been. Slaving away. Going hell for leather <laughs> this week on the, on the cabinets for production run two. So we've got another six pairs, I think, of cabinets for Mum Sixes made. Yep. Um, but the yeah existing orders were we just there's a few bits we're waiting for in the packaging department which mm. have been delayed. Um, we should have all that sorted this week, and then um, they'll be going out. And Mum Eights have been steadily going out as well again a few supply chain issues. it's just my whole life at the moment seems to be supply chain issues with stupid irritating little things just emailing people that i need <laughs> to build a pair of speakers um but all that it is coming in mm. slowly um the main thing with you know we've got all the drivers and all that we've got all the important bits it's just irritating little things like connectors that keep selling out and i have to spend a day scouring the internet getting three from here and four from there and uh, that, that's definitely one of the most boring parts of and frustrating, designing a product yeah, and frustrating. And frustrating it's parts. like, ah, oh, great, yeah, I really fancy spending eight hours today looking for a plug socket. <laughs> yeah, exactly, <laughs> trying to find a, trying to find a whatever, some yeah, the right size crimp connector or, yeah. or something like that is. Um, and that that's some. I don't know if you guys in the comments feel free to let me know. I don't know if you guys in the comments ever buy much from Amazon, but recently it's just been the case where everything we've bought has either been wrong like completely not what we ordered or just like beyond crap well i've i've now cancelled our account and we have a rule that we so we were we were ordering just things like paper and document wallets and and, and stuff like that and just pretty much everything they sell is crap hmm. unless it's you know it, unless it's a brand unless it's a well known brand and even then you might get a counterfeit so, you know, you don't even know. So I've just cancelled the account, and the golden rule is, right, let's just not order any. And then it gets delivered somewhere else, and you get a notification on your phone saying your parcel has been delivered, and you're like, no, it hasn't. And you have to go and walk around 10 other units to try and find out where your, where your delivery has gone. Um, Goodbye, so, Bobby. yeah, bye, 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 Amazon. Um, Yes, but yeah, so uh, yeah, the sixes are leaving the building, eights are leaving the building. We've had some interest in Atmos systems we have indeed. as well, which is really exciting because I've been, I'm still working away on our Atmos system in there, which is eights all the way around and then sixes in the ceiling. And I still just, every time I turn stuff on and press play, I still just get a massive, massive smile on my face. It's just so it's much a, fun. Because it's, it just sounds incredible. Um it really is a lot of fun. Like yeah. it, it changes the way you work. So to, just before we come on to like fully on, well, I suppose it is that topic. 
you were saying about Amazon doing counterfeits and stuff. A lot of people buying Apple AirPods from Amazon are getting fakes. Yeah, just don't buy anything like, from Amazon. <laughs> I've seen a lot of posts recently on Reddit about the number of people getting fake AirPods. Yeah. Um, and the reason I bring that up is I've been trying to mix some stuff on AirPods. Um, just A, for an experiment, and B, because it might turn into a YouTube video. Um, and doing, trying to see how close I can get it on AirPods because the, the algorithms come so far recently. Mm. You know, it does sound pretty good when listening back to stuff. So I'm really curious to see just how good I could get it and then I'll compare it on the speakers next door. Um, yeah. Well, that, that's when the software is working. You know, there's a problem at the moment on Logic where when you, you monitor using the Apple renderer algorithm, it adds a second of reverb <laughs> to, to everything. everything. Yeah, which is you, like, it could be a brand new project with nothing on it apart from the, the metronome and it will add reverb to that. It's like, okay. That's yeah. not what we want. And we don't want to go too far down the Atmos rabbit hole this week because we did last week. Yeah. Um, but it is the, there's, a, there's a shift happening as well mm. in people's perception of it. For sure. Over the last couple of weeks, like massively, 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 something's, something's happening, mm. something's shifting. People Maybe it's are, just been people on YouTube talking about it. I don't people, know. No, it's not because it's still, it's still generally neg- it's very negative kind mm. of um, – yeah, I suppose. Of, of feedback on it. But again, from people that haven't worked in it or experienced it or um, got anything out into the world in it. But people that have are loving it. So there's your answer. Mm. Um, and the cons- all the con- sort of consumer surveys they've been doing as well um, have been getting, I think it's 80% of people with an Apple Music subscription were listening to Spatial Audio last year and probably didn't even mm. know it. Mm. Um, and yeah, so it's getting, there's the the... The vibe is I said that word again. Good mm. job, sounds like it's a shout <laughs> Quick sound the alarm. Is is um yeah is it's going from very negative to very positive, mm. very quickly, and people are starting doing it with what they've got. You don't need to spend thousands of pounds on putting loads of speakers up down the room. Yes, you do if you're mastering or you're doing high end mixing for labels. Then yes, you absolutely do. Yeah, um, but you can start on headphones and you can get a very long way on headphones. Um, at least with, get your levels and stuff. And, yeah, with you know. the renderer that's already built into your to your mm. DAW. So I think the the perception of the oh, it's just about making loads of money for manufacturers and blah 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 blah. Um, it isn't that that perception is starting to change mm. as well. If you've got Logic, you bought Logic five years ago. You've now got and, and you've got a pair of headphones. Not even the Apple ones. You've got everything you need to start working in Atmos without spending a penny mm. on anything. And interestingly, as well. I think this has only happened recently, but Windows has started to support spatial audio right. uh, natively within the operating system. Oh, right. Okay. Um, so I don't think it's on Apple Music yet, but we'll come to why that's a horrendous idea anyway. Um, but I think from memory within the operating system, it, you can now like enable it for, for like games and all that kind of stuff and mm. films. Um, but I don't know if anyone in the chat... So I, I use Apple Music because I've got a Mac, I've got an iPad, I've got a phone, an Apple Watch. You know, I'm in the Apple ecosystem. And in general, if you use Apple Music on an Apple device, it's good. There are some frustrations with it, you know, like when you click on a playlist and uh, you click on an album name in a playlist and then it renames it instead of going to the album, which you moan about a lot. (laughs) Um, You know, there are some frustrations, but in general, it's a good bit of software. However, if you use it on Windows, it is probably one of the worst bits of software I've ever used in my entire life (laughs) it's absolutely awful it's not much better on mac it's one of those things you know where like apple deliberately make the windows things look horrendous so that you buy a mac well they've done that like times a hundred on apple music it's absolutely awful like most of the times it it just doesn't even play audio you click and then it just loads forever Mm. and then when it does load it will start skipping through tracks and it's like what an absolute piece of crap! But a couple of comments we need to let's let's do lots of comments yes. as well because sometimes we get distracted. Uh, Mark talks. Have you had the chance to test the Neumann MT48? I've been considering it for voiceover, but do a little audio production on headphones on the side at times. Uh, no, we haven't. It's obviously very similar to the the merging Anubis. I do know someone that's got one. Yeah, and that's Mikhail Mikulski. He's uh-huh. got a pair of uh-huh. my mates. All oh, right, uh, cool. so he's using the optical output i think it was optical or whatever digital it was from that to the mums so right. he's using it and loves it yep. so there's a good good bit of feedback there yep lots of good reviews on that we should probably try and get one and check one out and compare mm. it to the anubis as well because they are different mm. um the mt48 isn't just a neumann 
branded silver Anubis. There are there are differences. Um, Pazman says, what's the cost of going for a full MUM Atmos system, including the Audient interface? Well, a full MUM Atmos system, if you went for MUM 8s, left, centre, right, and then 6s for sides, 6s for rears, 6s for ceilings, that is... And an 8-inch LFE sub. Sub. Uh, that totals £21,000, because we offer a slight discount as well. It should be slightly more, but yeah. we take a, an Atmos okay. discount. So with a... So with a Audien Aurea, um, 23,500. Yes. Which, or, if you compare it to similarly priced systems, uh, sorry, similarly specced systems, it's about 45 from memory. Because I remember us looking back yeah, when we yeah. first started looking well, at we, Atmos uh, before we even a, decided to make speakers. It was like, right, what's this going to cost? Well, what we wanted from ATC was well, between I 100, mean, yeah. that was between 150 and 200. Yeah. I mean, if we're right. talking about like, the big boy speakers, you know, like the SEM 200s in the wall over there, definitely a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, um, and I know what I'd, I know shouting about our own products, but I know what I'd rather be working on. Mm. Having very recently experienced a full a- ATC at my system and mm. working regularly on ours, um, the, and the speakers just having the speakers disappear. Um, and we did have we did have sixes around the room when we were prototyping the sixes mm. as well. So we've used, so now we've now we've got mum eights everywhere, but sixes on the ceiling. But yep. a few weeks ago we had eights for left, center, right, and mm. sixes for sides, rears, and and, yep. and heights. And it, yeah, it just sounds, sounds mm. great. Having eights all the way around the room is just overkill, but we can do that. I mean, so we, you we, know, if, if you can have that. Are, then yeah, it's, it's, not, it's, yeah it's not overkill. Then everything really does sound identical up of that quality it is because we sell direct so yeah, there's no that's retail worse. margin no distribution margin it's just straight from us so realistically it costs about half what it should if it was to go through regular channels of selling um but there's a couple of really good questions that we should just cover uh, where are we uh what are your thoughts this is from bandy Fanoski. what are your thoughts on a dance hall or club that only plays atmos now it's interesting because there's one in london i think it's ministry of sound that right. plays atmos in the club and al- although i like the concept like the conceptual idea of it you know it's moving forward into new new kind of formats and that kind of thing i don't know how well that would work in a venue because imagine like Ministry of Sound is a big club. It's like multiple thousand people capacity, I think. It's it's bloody enormous. And if you're playing Atmos and then you walk over to the bar, you're just going to hear the backing vocal that the producer has put into the thing. So if you're standing yeah. at the bar, you're just going to hear... But meh, I'm, meh. I'm, I'm with Bob Clearmountain yeah. on that. I really love that. I like what I like doing an Atmos mix and then walking. And then so I like not, it in a small room like next door, but I don't know about in a club. Yeah, no, I'd, I'd love that. I want to hear a bit more... Of you know, not just front stuff and going somewhere else in the club. I think I did because I enjoy it in there. Mm. I like walking around the room mm. and because it gives you a different perspective on the music, True. especially with some of the more natural recordings, like some of the jazz stuff. You can go and sit next to the bass player, mm. and the drums are over there, and the piano's over there, and mm. I really enjoy that. I like the whole walking around the room thing. Cheapo Car Company said there would be a fight to stand in the middle of the dance floor. There probably would, yeah, to be honest. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, you know, it. to be fair, it, I think it also varies on the type of music that's being played, because mm. some electronic music that I've heard in Atmos has even the main vocals coming out of the side channels, which is a really odd choice. But then some of it is more kind of traditionally produced with everything coming out of left and right and then just effects and reverbs and stuff coming out from the rest. So I think it can vary massively depending on what you listen to. Mm. It's like there's a track that um, Andy from Audient played the other day when he came over and the lead, well, all of the vocals, lead and backing, were in the ceiling, like all of it. And that's the first track I've ever heard that's done that. Normally, yeah. it's mainly somewhere on the ground level and then, you know, a bit of addition in the top. Yeah, but this but was I, everything up top. But I think if so, basically dance music was created for clubs, wasn't it, in stereo? Mm. So I, I can see how dance music could be created for clubs in Atmos, bearing in mind that not everyone is going to be in the mm. in the 
the sweet spot so you can you can mix for that and i don't know how that would work but that's where the creative possibilities open up you haven't just got a left speaker and a right speaker anymore you can do all kinds of stuff and mm. you could have different zones in the club where you could have a ch- in, in the same space so you could have a chill out area where you just get backing vocals or imagine or synth pads in 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 a corner and mm. um yeah you could you could you could you could mix that's for an interesting that, concept actually for that and that, yeah i think it could be amazing why not huh. or you could do the headphone disco thing where everyone's wearing so obviously wireless headphones i, I wouldn't call clubs live music because obviously it's pre-recorded but uh nathan ainley has just commented saying do you think atmos could ever work in a live audio environment such as gigs now i'm not sure i mean at the moment I don't actually think there's a way to render it fast enough for no, there to not be latency. Oh yeah, technologically um, wise, um, yeah, the late because because they're already delaying, yeah, um, sort of stacks. To, so that's you know that if you've got sixteen stacks around the room, it's going to be a nightmare. Um, so it would only work in and in terms of like the actual processing latency as well as like half a second. Yeah, or it would only work in sort of venues up to a certain um, size. I think. But I mean, but again, the possibility, the possibility for stuff if the if the sound is tied in with the lighting. So, for example, you've got in the. I mean, it would probably work somewhere like the O2, mm. where you've got a main sort of PA and there mm. isn't a delay um, sort of stack. At the, but yeah, to, so to hang, I don't know, twelve line arrays hmm. around the O2, the and then having that. sound kind of spinning around as lighting follows it and. And the wristband thing they can do with the infrared yeah, light cannons, definitely. and uh, it could be amazing. Yeah, I think I think it will. I think it's gonna it's gonna go that way and and give you a totally different. I mean, to be fair, I feel like you always find these kind of technologies in unexpected places. Yeah, I, I mean, feel like have, so happen. I have a circular stage in the middle of the venue, which is a thing already, yeah, yeah. and it you know, has been for for years and years. Yeah, um, and yeah, I think there's huge creative opportunities there. Mm. Um. Mr. Penguin said, I like headphone clubs because I can lower the volume. Well, yeah. so those like silent disco clubs are pretty funny. Like if you take your headphones off and you just listen to everyone singing out of tune, like, uh, uh, but you could do Atmos in there because obviously everyone's in the perfect listening environment. They're, they're all wearing headphones. So you could do it in there. That would be useful. Mm. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't think there would, it, I don't think it would be right to say that it would never happen in live world. I mean, as soon as the technology is there to make the rendering faster, so that there's no latency, that would remove one issue. Yeah, but the only reason um, the only reason we're using the renderer is for upload to mm. uh, is for deliverables at the moment. For live sound, you don't need that, so you don't need to go through the Dolby renderer at all. But you'd you'd need a way to give it. Posi- oh, I don't know. You can do that. You could do it with buses on a yeah. on a desk easily. But then would that- in the same way as you're giving different mixes to each musician, so you could give different mixes to each. What mm. you need is a way of controlling it. So. Yeah. Uh, which is something else I've been loving again this week in the studio is using the UF8 for Atmos panning is great because you've got your left and right on one knob and your front to back on another and then yes. your elevation yeah, yeah, yeah. on another and you can just grab knobs and move stuff really quickly and that's mm. been that's been good fun. So something like that in life or you know the old joystick mm. thing. Well, like I mean, some of the live desks a, are so advanced. I wouldn't yeah. be surprised if that's implemented into some of them, especially yeah, like the Digico SD series and all that kind of well, stuff. Well, there's a sound particles plugin where you can point your phone where you want the sound to come out. Can you? Yeah. That's been that's huh. been out for a couple of years at least. Um so you just sit in the listening position in the studio and if you and you select a track and if you want it over there you just point your phone where you want it to come through and it uses the thingy in your phone the 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 what's it called yeah um accelerometer to- i mean so that there are already good examples of venues using surround audio so as oliver in the chat has just said uh doesn't the las vegas sphere have amazing directional audio mm. yes yeah. it does so i think from memory that has something like sixteen thousand speakers it's built into it. it's, it's a huge yeah. number like that um and yeah hyper directional audio every, i think that's also got beam control so it, yeah it's every per seat every seat is the sweet spot it which does, is crazy it doesn't matter where you sit in that venue I, I feel a bit sick just thinking of the amount of engineering that would go into designing that that's yeah. just mad but it's you know that's that's how things and that's why the atmos argument for oh no one's gonna have 16 speakers in their living room um falls to bits because you don't need that the technology mm. for consumer playback systems is getting really really good and the technology and this is what we keep saying this is why we call present day production studio oh, i've got to have a 1073 
no, you haven't. Hmm. You know, get, ugh, it's so stuck in the 70s. Got well, to have a console, got to have this, got to have that. It's just stuck in last century. It really is. So talking about being stuck in last century, we had the chance to talk to some people in educational institutions recently, didn't we? And hmm. it was interesting to see that some people aren't offering Atmos as a thing, which seems kind of backwards considering how much the industry is moving towards it especially like streaming services and stuff where you have to be at most up to to, to be playlisted yeah it just all, seems very backwards yeah um there's yeah um it's kind, yeah it's kind of difficult to talk about without getting really annoyed uh, <laughs> yeah um, we won't name but, anyone obviously no but um Yeah, I th- I th- I think if you're young and you're watching this channel and you're thinking about going to university mm. to study music production and they're not covering Atmos in the syllabus, then you should not pay them twenty grand a year yeah. or whatever it is for a mm. for a three year course. You should walk away and find someone else that is, and there are there are plenty that are, um, but that's probably for another mm. another discussion. For sure. So I'm feeling quite chilled out tonight and I don't start ranting about <laughs> no, stuff. No, it's unusual. Mark hasn't <laughs> shouted about anything <laughs> yet. What's going tired. on? Um, yeah, well, let's have a look at a few more questions we've got coming in. Does Spotify have Atmos support yet? No. no. I don't even think they intend on offering it yet, do they? I think they made an announcement that said they weren't. Um, Weird. Yeah, I don't know how that whole business operates really yeah. i don't even think There's... they've got lossless audio yet i think it's still in no i think i think they have now, audio. But you, i think you have to is pay it? more for it i don't i don't really mm. i don't ever listen there's one I've thing it, no. there's one thing that spotify get really really right much better than any of the other platforms and that's suggested that their suggestions yes that's for what you a should lot listen of people to. say that because on apple music you can listen to the most obscure Bavarian folk music you can find and it will suggest Taylor Swift next oh yeah Taylor Swift very well known for her Bavarian folk music and you can be listening to some really way out jazz stuff and the next suggestion that comes up will be Mm. Taylor Swift and you can listen to James Brown from the 60s basically whoever's selling the most and it will suggest Taylor Swift it just suggests Mm. pop well, do you know what? Like, so Shit, I use... all, the, all the time, and it's like, what, you're supposed to be clever. I know. It's, well, clearly not. I mean, so I use Apple Music for streaming, but I never, ever use it for recommendations. I use YouTube. Right, yeah, YouTube. So good. despite yeah. the fact, you know, the audio quality isn't fantastic, whatever, I'm just using it to find new music. Hmm. And I, I do that quite a lot in the evenings when I'm just sitting on my computer at home. I'm always finding new stuff on YouTube specifically. I'll just search a term like uh, metalcore or something or K-pop, whatever it might be. And just go down the YouTube wormhole, like a hundred videos <laughs> deep, and just find like loads of new music. And that's almost exclusively how I've been finding new stuff yeah. over the last probably year, actually. I, I've spent a lot of time on YouTube just finding music, which previously I never used to do. I used to just rely on Apple Music and you know, it was okay, but there was nothing like spectacular. But to, going on to... YouTube and doing that has introduced me to new genres. It's found new, you know, new styles of music, new stuff that I love, stuff that I hate. And I used to it's... go to a record shop. Well, yeah, you could do that. Imagine, imagine that, and um, the the manager of Garen Records in mm. Cambridge. Every week, I'd go in with my wage slip and go, right, what have you got this week? Anything with a Hammond in it. Mm. Um, and yeah, there'd be a stack of records to buy, and that's where my wages went. Yes, but yeah, the YouTube algorithm works. Um, there is a question from Jim Davis, which we'll come to in just a second because he's posted it again, which is a good question. As you know, let's do it now. So, yep. Mark, you mentioned difficulty with membrane traps regarding frequency. I've made a limp membrane mass traps using sheet rubber for the membrane. They work fine. My room now sounds excellent. So. This is probably following on from one of our acoustics videos that we did ages ago. Yeah. Um, yeah. A um, little difficulty building membrane traps. The thing is, all of acoustics is pretty difficult, isn't it? As I don't think there's a particularly easy part. So the problem with membrane traps is if you're building tuned membrane traps, uh, you've got to know how to tune them, which is proper engineering. And then they've got to be positioned in... So you're trying to kill 60 hertz. 
you've got to know how to tune that membrane trap to 60 hertz, which is very, very, very difficult and mm-hmm. basically trial and error unless you've got anechoic chambers with a hole in the wall that you can build a proper test rig in, like when they measure the coefficients of GIK panels and stuff like that. There's basically an anechoic, uh, uh, sorry, a reverberant chamber with a hole in the wall and they put the acoustic treatment on the wall and then see what happens the other side of it to the... Mm. Very complicated. Um, and then when you have built your 60 hertz tuned membrane trap, um, you need to put put it where 60 hertz is building up in the room, otherwise it won't do anything. So if you put it in a null, there's no energy, yeah, there's no energy. there for it to absorb. Um, and then when you do that, you then find that you need to build 15 of them, and they all need to be where the build-ups are, and that's nearly always going to be where there's a door or mm. a window or at your listening position yeah. or where the desk needs well, to that, go. Well, that was a problem we had in this room. So when we were designing this room, it was like, there's going to be base build-ups in the corner here and the corner over there, but we need a door somewhere, yeah. like otherwise we can't get in. And so there are compromises that you kind of have to make within the design for reasons like doors and fire escapes and stuff yeah but- so 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 limp mass absorbers um which i think is what you've built work on a different principle and they're not tuned per se they're just sort of designed to absorb a, a more general um sort of low frequency mm. cluster of 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 audio um, and they can be very effective but again you've got to put them where the where the build-up is um and if you've built some and your room sounds excellent then you've probably got lucky um, because I've built loads in the past and just haven't had any success at all because mm. I haven't been able to put them where I need to put them. And at the moment, we've got a 140 hertz room mode floor to ceiling in my room, which isn't ideal. And 140 hertz should be relatively easy to to kill because it's we need basically need 60 centimetres of absorption to kill it but we can't get the absorption where it needs to be to kill it sure um so that's the so that's the that's the problem so i could you know i could build 60 centimeter deep traps and pile them up in the corners of the room and it's not going to make any difference because that's not where the 140 hertz build up is that's causing the 140 hertz cancellation i either need to build them and put them in the listening position where I am, which isn't practical unless I surround myself in them. Um, There's your solution. There you go. Yeah, or put them w- right where the centre speaker is because because mm. it's in in the middle of that wall, sort of floor to ceiling. Mm. So then I can't list, I can't hear the centre speaker. I can't see a screen. It blocks the air conditioning. It blocks the ventilation. Yep. Um, so we can't get them where they where they need to go. So one possible solution, as uh, Medjus has just commented, is active bass trapping. So for those who don't know, uh, companies like PSI make active yep, bass traps but with again, their Avers. I've got to put those where I'm sitting or where the centre speaker is. It's the same thing. You've got to put them where, if I'm trying to kill 140 hertz, I've got to put them where there's a 140 hertz build-up. Otherwise, they won't work. So you've got the same... Pro- yes, they can be a lot more smaller, uh, a lot more smaller, a lot smaller, even tired brain again. Um, but you've got to put them where the build up is. If you don't put them where the build up is, then they don't do anything. Mm. So you've and, and that's the that's the problem we've got in there. We basically need to build a, ro- a new room now, which is kind sure. of on the cards at some point in the future. Um, but that's the yeah, that's the that's the big problem is is often putting them mm. where they need to be. Yes, there we go. And they're really expensive obviously as well and you generally need at least four or six i think from memory the psi ones are around two thousand five hundred pounds a a unit yeah you need about four of them yeah so that's 10 between 10 and fifteen thousand quid to to treat your room assuming you can you can put them where they Mm. where they need to go but they are very good and they do yeah i mean we've we've been kind of we were talking about trying them for a while weren't we because our our friend paul who distributes psi stuff in the uk um, was going to lend us a couple just to try or maybe yeah, a YouTube video out. on. So at some point you might end up seeing a review on the, the PSI Avers. Um, I don't know when that will be, but yeah, it, I'd be very interested to hear them, um, especially in our room, because the bass is mostly under control. It's just that kind of 140 hertz dip mm. that's there. So I'd be interested, because can you tune? Uh, you can tune them, can't you? The they, PSI co- ones? they cover 20 hertz to or 10 i think a bit below 20 hertz to about mm. 150 so you don't need to tune them you literally just need to turn them on right 
um, and they'll cover that whole sort of low end. Yeah, it's been a while since I've looked at them, but I, I would de- definitely be interested to hear them because um, I mean the the room that. Um, Bear with me just a sec. I'll be back in a moment. Why are you leaving me behind? Where are you going? Oh, brilliant! That's really awkward. Now I was mid conversation and you just left me. I does this all the time. Right. So the worst thing ever. We have no had no plan for this this live stream because we decided we were doing the live stream four hours ago, and then we suddenly get into a conversation and Mark disappears halfway through. Fantastic. I would talk to Sam, but Sam is expired somewhere else. Uh, so let's just look at the comments quickly. So apologies for this brief intermission of content. Um, <laughs> uh, Peter Dawn in Eden said, hire a huge throat singer for a living active bass trap. That is a fantastic idea. I'd be actually interested to see <laughs> what you could do with that. I'd imagine not much, but that would be quite a... Uh, quite a an interesting thing hello sam so sam is watching the live stream but he's got the lurgy so we left him at home um give us a song there is absolutely no chance you would ever find me singing either on a live stream or a uh a a a video or in person or anything it would not happen ever um i cannot sing i mean i might be able to but only in the shower or in my car uh, that's about as far as it goes. Uh, brilliant. Puffer fish decor. Honestly, some of the comments that come through on the, the chat, I'm just like, where did this come from? Puffer, puffer fish decor. I have no idea. Uh, do, 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 do. Apologies for me just trying to kill time. I wasn't expecting Mark to just disappear halfway through this live stream. I think he's gone to make a tea because he obviously can't last five seconds without making a drink. Oh, he's back. There we go. There's Floppy. Thanks, thanks for leaving me behind, Mark. I've just you know, had I to. Do that every week. Yeah, but normally Sam's here, so I can talk to another human. I know, but I wasn't mid conversation, so I didn't have to like sneakily change topics halfway through. I'm back. What are you like? I'm just an amateur at this live stream business. People are saying that I should uh, sing, sack me. sing, sack you. Yes, but. Uh, that I should have sung them a song while you were gone, but no one would want that emotional trauma. <laughs> Flop's got his, it's a shame we haven't got a raving cam. Flop's got his claws stuck on a bass Yeah, trap, he does that sometimes. Which... <laughs> he like attacks bits of our acoustic yeah, treatment just, and then just gets stuck and can't stuck get his off. hand out. Bless him. He Poor, got excited. I thought, he thought I was going to get him some chicken. Poor little mittens. Uh, Poor Flop. Question from Ooh. Antonio Montana. Which budget near fields should I buy for video editing purposes? interesting i mean how budget are we talking are we talking 300 pounds are we talking 800 i mean there are a pretty wide selection i think if your if your budget is like let's say 500 pounds a pair you're probably pretty safe going with anything like carly lp8s or what else we got adams t8v that kind of thing because for that kind of money I think you do tend to get roughly the same performance. Guys like Carly, I think, are on the upper end of the budget stuff. I think they've put a lot more kind of research and and design stuff into their budget monitors. Um, And I think you you get a lot for what you pay for, you know, considering they're cheapish. The problem I found with cheap nearfields, which we found with pretty much all the cheap nearfields we reviewed as well, was that the cabinets resonate. Yes. Uh, and you, that's really noticeable on mm. spoken word. Well, there's um, a really interesting one. I don't know if it would resonate. Uh, so Medusa's just commented saying Carly released a smaller monitor recently. I don't know if this is the same one you're thinking of, but they released, I don't know if you've seen, like a, a desktop, desktop one thing with sub, called yeah. the INUNF or something. <laughs> it stands for something else, yeah, I-N-U-N-F, uh, yeah. but I can't remember what it, what it stands for. Ultra Ultra Nearfield. Ultra Nearfield. Ultra Nearfield. Ultra Nearfield. Um, yeah. yeah, they. I've actually heard really good things about them. Like these tiny little boxes. I think there's like a base box as well that goes under the desk. Mm. But these tiny little things will be getting pretty decent feedback from quite a lot of people. And I, I don't think they're very expensive at all. Yeah. Um, I think it's just, I'd be interested to hear. For it's sure. the kind of thing where you've got to try it and you're going to be doing a lot of speech editing as well. And speech is the hardest thing to replicate with speakers yes. because we're so used to hearing it. So anything I that's, must admit, that's, that's wrong. Whenever it comes to video editing and I've been doing it on headphones or just on any cheap, shitty things that I can find lying around, 
that's the one thing I always struggle with is dialogue. Yeah, and maybe the not hard, the level, but the tonality. It's the hardest thing to get right. If you really want to test a pair of speakers, put on an audio book uh, read mm. by Stephen Fry, mm. and that will show every flaw in a in a in a speaker. And that was that was. That was kind of the final stage of testing for us when we were developing the 8. There was a tiny little resonance at about 200 hertz I just couldn't get rid of and had to because you could really – it sounded like low feedback. On the, yeah, well, on, we thought there was something wrong with the DSP or something at first. It's like, why is the speaker feeding back? Yeah, and then it, it, yeah, after it, it was, a long was, listening period, it, it was, was subtle, but you could it was just a boom, 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 boom. You could, yeah, you could just hear that, and then we determined that it was it was a resonance in the cabinet which we had mm. to kill, and we did. Um, but it's yeah, if you that so you really need to hear them for for speech editing. If your budget's around about five hundred pounds, you might be better off with headphones. Well, that's the or thing. So with headphones, so three hundred pounds or less. Mm. I'd go the headphones route. To the be, thing is, to be with headphones, for the same amount of money, you get more. You get a better product, I yeah. think. So if you spent, for example, just as a round number example, if you spent a £1,000, well, let's say 500 quid. If you spent 500 quid on a pair of headphones, you'd get a pretty good pair of headphones. Mm. You know, you'd get you know, a decent, I don't know what, I, I don't really use headphones, but you'd get a good, accurate pair. Yeah. If you spent 500 quid on speakers you're still very much in the low end budget yep. market um obviously because the the manufacturing costs are very different the technology involved is different you know the, the actual parts cost less as well because they're all smaller and less powerful so there's a couple of people in the comments saying the iLoud MTM as well i've heard good things about that and i really like to hear that because yeah. i don't think i've ever met anyone that said bad things about that one mm. um and that is a pretty cheap option um and Bench has just commented about his VSXs. So yeah. the VSX is like a modeling headphone by Slate. Um, I'd really like to hear that because every time someone mentions headphones in our Discord, Bench tries to sell them a v- VSX. Well, we were talking and to... And I really, really want to hear it. We were talking to Phil Ward, who's just reviewed him in Sound on Sound. So check out this month's Sound on Sound because there's a review of those mm. in there. And he was saying to us, if you haven't checked them out, you need to check them out because they're really seriously good. Mm. Um, so the slate vsx is about 500 according to will english cool um but antonio said long editing hours headphones hurt after a few hours and that is very true that's the problem i find you know what? i don't think i i own any pair of headphones that isn't uncomfortable after about an hour or two hours like these are there's no way i could do it there's no way i could do an hour they're all right i I mean the the only reason (laughs) i wear these is to make sure that nothing breaks a song and i've had enough um, um I, I find headphones personally quite uncomfortable and so i've got these i've got there's a pair, pair of bear dynamics down there i've got a pair at home i've got like gaming headsets and all that and even so like pretty expensive headsets i find my ears get really tired both in terms of like physical like distortion fatigue kind of thing but also physically just like on my head mm. it my head just hurts after a while and that's obviously something you don't get so much with monitors yeah within reason um, yeah, and if you've got the faux leather ear pads, you get sweaty ear syndrome. Oh, and all that. yeah. All that kind of stuff as well. Not good. Um, Sam says, buy a Dynamic DT 1990 Pro if you want headphones. In Yeah, I, yeah. I'm a big buyer headphones I mean, fan. I use the... You use these ones. I use those because... And the only reason I use those is because I know them really well, and I know them really well is because they're the most Jesus. comfortable pair of headphones I've ever found. They've got a furry um, ear thing like rather than a, a plasticky or leathery one so i don't get sweaty they're really lightweight they're really comfortable um mm. and uh, yeah they're the only ones I've, i must admit I've... i think the bayers are among the most comfortable i've used because mm. obviously we 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 found them didn't we when we went to tommen in we did we, uh germany we went through about 300 pairs of headphones trying to find the ones yeah. that we liked the best and the, it was the headphone department in tommen is ridiculous it's yeah. like everything you could ever imagine on a shelf in front of you and they're all plugged in you can try them all and yeah. we literally and they, stood there for ages didn't and they we? had tower of power on the test tracks so i'm like yeah, yes exactly. some music i know which is which is good yeah. Uh, yeah we spent most of the day trying headphones and then walked out well, i think i bought the 770s and you bought the 990s or one or the other i got the closed backs closed which back. i think are 770s and these ones down and here the and the 990s yeah um and you know i i quite like them i personally like a sound that is slightly more bass heavy as well so closed backs benefited me in two ways they are slightly bass heavier and also they block out the sound because i bought them for like drum tracking and yeah, stuff which so obviously i do all the time now yeah you don't, you, <laughs> you don't you click in the mics 
Um, you know, the, the thing is, there are so many good options with headphones, especially as you get so much more for your money for less compared mm. to speakers. Yeah. You know, if you have five hundred pound, the door's pretty much wide open. You know, it's there's, yeah, there's a, a lot, lot of good lot options. Of options there. Yeah. Um, one one that I would love to hear are the head headphones. I've heard so yeah. many good things about them, and I'd be really curious to hear them. I think they're quite expensive. Are they the ones that are about three grand, or are they the Audis ones? Yeah, the Audis, Audis, or however you, Audis. However you um, Cause some, someone in the chat, uh, Jan, uh, Jan Yanko said, I have the Audis, Audis LCD X. Um, I'd be really interested to know, actually. Let me know in the comments, how does that compare to using a pair of Beryllium Mum 8s? Because you've got both. I have not heard both, mm-hmm. and I'd be very interested to know. Yeah um so <coughs> yeah I, I wonder how much use they get because it's very personal as well isn't it it's like if you are obviously in a position where you have the space and kind of acoustics to be able to use speakers some people prefer using speakers only like me like i, I can't stand using headphones unless i physically have to like now mm. um Whereas well, other people kind of swear by them and don't trust speakers so much, and it's well, very I'm, personal. I'm having to use them a lot more now that we're in Atmos world because you've got to check. So right. I went, I, I, so stereo master, and I check it on headphones, but literally for the length of the song, and then they're off again. Mm. Um, for Atmos, you've got to keep checking mm. all the time and sort of make little tweaks and stuff like that. So I'm having to wear them yeah. a lot more. But again, the buyers are doing the job, and I know them really well, so that's probably the best option for me. But I am sort of interested in exploring some other avenues and seeing if there's a particular type of headphone that gives you a better binaural representation mm. um so uh yeah that's what we'll, we'll, well maybe yeah maybe we'll, some of the ones like the heads or the uh apparently it's pronounced odyssey uh some of those would be quite good for us to try yeah at some point um i, I really want to try the slate vsx's so when we deliver yeah, we should, uh, yeah, we benji's mum sixes mm. um i am going to steal the vsx's We'll check them out. <laughs> I'll give you a swap. You can... <laughs> swap it. Um, yeah. Well, there's so many people commenting on what they use. So we've got everything from like Sony MDRs to Audisys to Focals, Focal, Focal, however you say it. Focal. Focal. There are so many options. Uh huh. Interesting. Yeah. Um, Jan, if you're still watching, just let us know how your kind of workflow varies between headphones and speakers. Um, Cause I, I think for me, I've, I've still not found the pair of headphones that work for me. I've right. not, I've not found that pair where I can just trust it and be like, yeah, sounds yeah. great. I'm sure if it had some kind of calibration on it, maybe like sonar works headphones or whatever it's called, maybe that would work. Um, but yeah, would be interesting uh jim davis has commented saying acoustics insider says that non-parallel walls make standing waves worse my experiments suggest he is wrong that's interesting so i was under the impression that non-parallel walls like that are better because you don't have the the reflections coming directly back onto each other they're being offset generally the difficult thing with that is so acoustics these days is going back towards starting with a rectangular room. The mm. reason for that is yes. you can accurately predict what is going to happen, whereas yeah. if you haven't got parallel walls, you can't. Yeah. Um, so most traditional studios, if you look at the footprint, take the roof off and look at how they're built, particularly the control room, then it's they're sort of an, an upside-down diamond shape mm. almost. It's, it's, it's non-parallel walls. That's what we've got. So we've, we've got in, both in. here. We've got the best of both worlds. So your room next door is a rectangle. This one is... A weird octagon type thing. Yeah, um, I would I would show you what it looks like, but you can't tell from here. But you can see on that camera. So we have got obviously the flat front wall here with the telly on it, and then that wall where Mark's head is is like forty five degrees or so, and then this red wall up here is all full of rock wall and sticks out about a meter, maybe half a meter. So it's like lots of weird ins and outs weird in angles. this room. Yeah. Um, to try and give the best possible response. There are a couple of changes that I think would need to happen in this room if we were to go full Atmos. Um, you know, it would need deadening just slightly more. 
it's not a super dead room. Yeah, that's the thing when you're designing a room as well. If you're designing a room for stereo playback, it's it's very often very different than if you're designing one for Atmos. So a lot of um, a lot of traditional studios have a hard front wall with the monitors soffit mounted, so that gets rid of any speaker boundary interference response issues. Yeah. Um, that with Atmos, you've got rear speakers firing against the wall, so you're getting huge reflections coming off the wall. Um, and that's why a lot of the rooms we've been in that are traditional stereo mixing rooms that have just had an Atmos system put in sound crap mm. because those rooms are designed for stereo for playback, two speakers. not Atmos yeah. playback. They're designed to have the sound firing that way and then being absorbed and diffused mm. um, before it gets back to the listening position. If you start putting speakers over there and there and on the ceiling, then it doesn't. It falls to bits. It, it doesn't yeah. work. So you really need a room designed for... For, and that's the problem we're having in there with the 140 mm. hertz issue as mm. well. There's suddenly sound coming from everywhere. Um, so we I mean, want to build Thankfully, a... it sounds good in there still. Yeah. It's oh, just, yeah, you yeah. can it's, just it's, tell it's... that little dip in the bass. Yeah, when the Trinov is helping as well, filling in the gap. Yes. Um, and that's, you know, that's, that's doing what it's designed to do, which is great. But it is better to go back and do it um, in with physics if you can and that's why we mm. need to build a new room and that room will be completely absorbent all the way around yep. and if you can make the room big enough that you don't start to get cabin fever then so basically fantastic. environmentless if if possible yeah but even if um even if you went to so tom hidley was famed for his non-environment mm. rooms um and he solved the problems of the the way the front wall interacts with the floor when it's solid and you've got soffit mounting speakers in it by having what he called a base pit, which was basically behind the console, there was a huge, normally two or three metre deep pit in the floor that right. was filled up with a labyrinth of sort of waveguides and acoustic treatment and then huh. covered in fabric with a sign on it saying, do, do not, not walk on, on this. this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, and, and there was, so there was a little bit of walk room around the back of the console, but yeah. then directly behind that was a huge bass trap in the floor and that solved a lot of the problems. Do you reckon there's a photo of this? Who was it? Tom? Tom Hidley. Uh, well, that's what they did in Bop. Yes. But I think that was the first room, the first rooms where he did that. I don't know whether you'll find a photo that shows it or not. But um, mm. so he does. But again, that that so so if you were to put an Atmos system in one of Bop's control rooms, it's not going to work because no. you've got a hard. It's not designed for yeah that. a hard front wall. That's not what it's designed for. It's designed for stereo. Um, so it's no, there's no photos online. Yeah, um, but the reason a lot of acousticians these days are starting with a rectangular room, which is a lot of them. I mean, Carl Tatz does it in particular. Mm. Um, is because it's predictable. You can you know where the room mo modes are going to be, wall to wall and floor to ceiling, and you can put bass traps in to absorb most of that and get a very predictable result. Uh, whereas with a room with non-parallel walls it's yep. very difficult you can't really predict anything it's mm. trial and error you've got to play around with stuff and then you you end up with a problem that could mean reconstructing the entire room to fix um so a lot of people are starting with a rectangular room and then making because sure i mean they that's get that's something that we potentially it. have to do in that room in there is take the roof off yeah in order to to well, do the base trapping required what would for solve our problem hertz. would be to do an upside down tom hidley room so yeah. if we put a huge mm. base trap in the ceiling at the front of the room literally took the roof off and put the base trap above the roof mm. that would work because that would solve yeah the 140 so for context hertz problem. in our studio all of the rooms are 3.6 meters high so they're really high ceilings as you can see in here um and above that is about another three meters or so so we've got a lot of space above so theoretically, if we could be bothered to take the roof off, <laughs> you know, it could yeah, be fixed. but that's not but an easy job. Exactly. It's not an easy job. And you'd probably, as you said, get more benefit from just completely building a brand new room like we intend to do anyway. Yeah, you'd have to, um, you'd have to and, remove all the joists. You'd have to move the steel. You'd have to yeah. change the structure and integrity of the, yeah. whole, of the whole room. So, I mean, you could possibly drill holes in it and get some of the way there, but... Um, so there's an interesting one here from Mark Talks. When acoustic problems are more predictable, does that mean something like a Trinov will have an easier time correcting it? So when we mean predictable, it's like basically you're able to tell where the room modes will be. So say, for example, you've got a room of three meters long. You know that it might be 
x hertz it might be just for a number it might be 100 hertz right so you know that will be a problem and then you can then build into your design right i know i need base trapping of this depth i, I need and where this need built into well. the wall here yeah. because that's where the room build up will be so that's what we mean by predictable it doesn't mean it will be easier for the trinov to fix it because obviously if your room still sounds like shit the trinov can't fix that it's just that you can then plan that into your build <coughs> and you can then um you you can work out the best way to to plan everything for most efficient use of materials and acoustic treatment mm. and you know not compromise your design so there's a really good website if anyone's curious on you know how to plan that kind of thing there's a, a really good website called amrock uh room mode calculator yeah which and again only works with rectangular or square no rooms, no no square interestingly rooms, there is they? now a non-rectangular room oh, calculator as okay, well but you've got to be pretty spot on with your measurements and your yes. angles i would imagine um so you can basically uh let me just stick it uh stick some numbers in 600 300 300 there we go so let me put that on that screen there we go so there as you can see Mark can't see it, but as you can see on this screen, you can basically plug in some numbers and then this is what we mean by predictable. So in the kind of, for want of a better word, naked room, these are the room modes that you would probably have. So if you if you have a room built with those dimensions, which you'll see in the in the top left corner up here, these are your room modes. And then as you mouse over the room modes, you'll see this diagram down here changes and you can then see right there's going to be on the long wall floor to ceiling there's going to be some room modes on this one in the corners floor to ceiling and so on and basically you can see all the places that you need to do some treatment and that's that's predictability yep. you can then think right here's probably what's going to happen in the room you know that there's always real world variables that that would change that like the thickness of the wall is there sound escaping from the wall that kind of thing yeah exactly yeah. but it's a good starting place because you can plan things. Um, so hopefully that's helpful. Hopefully that explains the question for you. Yeah, the Trinov doesn't care whether it's predictable or not. It just measures what's happening at the time you measure it and, yes. and does the um, and corrects it to the best of its ability. Interesting, the thing we really noticed with the Trinov when we took it to Shane's in the week yes. um, was that it was really clearing up a lot of desk reflections. Mm. Um, that was because the room was so good. Yes, yeah, so I'll just get um, up a photo and, of his room and, again. And relatively flat, but you could really hear what the you could really hear what the desk. And obviously, you need a desk and you need a screen. You know, it's ergonomics. You've got to have this stuff. Um, so that can be a really difficult problem to, to yeah to solve. Oh, well, I mean, um, so you you can see in these photos of Shane's studio that pretty much every surface is covered. Yeah, you know, there's very very little empty space apart from I think that was a skylight maybe above the yeah. desk. Yeah. Um. So in a room like that, that's where a Trinov would work the magic, as we heard. Yeah, you know, the room is already really... in a good starting place. It's not, <coughs> yep. you know, it, it's not starting from a bad position. If you put a Trinov in a bathroom, it would still sound like a bathroom. You know, it might tame some of the room modes and stuff, but really, you're starting from a bad place. You want the, the Trinov's the delicious icing. You want it to be delicious icing exactly. on a really good cake, not delicious icing on a crap cake that's got meat in it or something, something like that or has gone off or something like that. So Ray Lanigan, uh, hello, said, love the show as always. Thank you very much. Uh, just wondering, can you go overkill with soundproofing and bass traps? I'm only saying because of the digital technology out nowadays to EQ most rooms. No. No? No. So, yeah, I mean... Uh, Theoretically, with the the amount of budget and space available, but, but, you yeah. could particularly, build the perfect room. Particularly in terms of low end, um, you can't overtreat a room, mm. as far as I'm concerned. Uh, but if you don't treat the room, you can't. And this is what people don't get: you can't correct everything with EQ. No EQ, and this is really important to understand, especially if you're designing a room or a home studio. EQ, the EQ curve you end up with from the combination of your speakers and your monitors is the result of lots of different things. Mm. It's not the be all and end all sure. of of everything. So, uh, so you can yeah you can measure the response of your room with a measurement microphone and you can flatten out that EQ curve, but mm. you're not solving the problems. If you've got 
100 hertz cancelling out at the listening position it doesn't matter how much you boost it you've still got 100 hertz cancelling out at the listening position so you need sure. to go back and which would then obviously put more strain on your monitors if you're yeah, trying to boost it, back into yeah that. and you're still not going to hear it but then when you move slightly to the left it's like bloody hell yeah. all you get is yeah, 100 yeah. hertz um so it's, it's so yeah because of the digital technology out nowadays so eq most rooms completely right re- if your room is totally untreated then digital technology will not yeah. save you at all you need to go back to the acoustic treatment yes so get yourself first. in a good starting position by treating the room then maybe if you yeah. need it look at EQ. otherwise the digital solution is the great icing on a crap cake yes. you need the you need a good cake to not yummy yeah, you need a good cake to start with. And no amount of digital processing will get rid of your reverberation time mm. in the room. If you've, got a, if you've got a reverberation time of three seconds mm. at 100 hertz, no amount of trinoving in the world will, no. will, will, no. will correct for that. Well, one thing that's really interesting to consider, though, is when you go too far on the absorption front. So in our old studio, in the control room, that was almost entirely absorbent, Mm. apart from a bit of diffusion that you added later on the back wall. Yeah. And it wasn't uncomfortable, but it was getting there. You know, if you spent more than about an hour in there, you'd go mental, because you get all cabin fibery. No, I I did. I I disagree, because you've got, there's lots of, there was lots of reflective surfaces in there. You've got that we had a 48 channel console Mm. for a start. You've got a lot of, reflection and a tiny bit of diffusion um off off of that but just going back to the can you overabsorb question again is you can overabsorb in the highs and mid so if you completely surround if you just put the shit foam from amazon mm. all over your room you're going to be absorbing pretty much everything down to about i don't know 5k but nothing below that because it's stupidly thin foam mm. That only works down to a certain frequency, um, and then you can make the room worse because you've absorbed all of the upper mids and the high energy, mm. but the low mids and the bass energy is still rattling mm. around all over the place. So you, you can overabsorb in the in in with cheap thin foam acoustic treatment. Um, it need, you need to it needs I, to be I meant if you were to properly treat to, like in here, you build a big proper studio and you went full. Uh, absorption yeah. in here it would probably be a bit overkill no, maybe a bit of stuff if, off the floor if, if we're doing the new Atmos room that is going to be 100% dry but interestingly I think that would be good for Atmos because you've got sound coming from everywhere exactly. whereas maybe in stereo I think maybe that's a bit weird I don't know yeah I mean people it depends it's how personal it, preferences yeah though, it depends how um, sensitive you are to when you have a conversation in the room if it's completely if you have a conversation in an anechoic chamber it yep. just sounds weird yeah because but but even if you completely absorb your room like Shane has there are still some reflections there are reflections off the floor there yeah. are reflections well, of the, lights. the only way there to are, have no reflections is to get rid of all is the to shit. have an anechoic chamber yeah. with nothing in it exactly um, and like netting on the floor as yeah. well so you can treat the floor exactly and if you and if you look at how they measure things in anechoic chambers they're quite often suspended on cables because yes. the cables yeah, yeah, yeah. if you put a speaker on a stand the stand resonates. the stand <laughs> is going to affect the measurement you get yeah. from the speaker so um yeah, that's that's the only way to, and that does sound weird if you're mm. ha- trying to have a conversation in a in a in an anechoic chamber, and then anyone that spent any amount of time in one on their own, then you start to hear things like your circulation, and, and which is all, crazy. All the bodily, f- and it, yeah, it just it just gets a bit weird. Um, and some people are really susceptible to that, and some people aren't. I mean, our room's pretty dead in there, and I well, so I can sit in there all day. The not, reverb time in that room is zero point one five seconds. So yeah, I think that's, so that's enough to be dead, but not enough to drive you. Mental, yeah. like there's, but there is dis- diffusion on the wall as well. In there, we got the white yeah, panels yeah, exactly. with yeah. kind of diffusion and absorption, yeah. which helps a lot, I think, because we built that room as a recording room rather than a rather than control that. room, which yeah, it now converted is converted. It, yeah. Um, you know, I, I think that room's got the best of both worlds. It's dead enough to be, you know, accurate within reason, but also not overpoweringly absorptive. Yeah, um, it's a, a good combo. Um, White Cloud said, "What's the poor guy's solution for treating a room on a budget? I get that one could build the absorbers yourself, but measuring, etc., any tricks? It would, of course, not be a professional level treatment. I mean, in terms of measurement, uh, measurement, 
you can get room EQ wizard, which is free. Yep. Uh, you can do all your measurements for free, I think, pretty much for life. I don't think there's a trial or anything. No, you should um, give a donation. But you can donate. Because it's, yeah, and you should. Um, and you should because it's a very, very good bit of software. Yeah, but you need to put the time into learning it as well. Because yes. if you don't know how to use it, then you're going to get very mixed results. And measuring a room is really difficult. It's not as easy. Yeah. Um, it's not as easy so, as you think it is. But you can start on a budget with what, what well, we did a video on it in lockdown. I was in an awful mm. sounding spare room in my house and I just made acoustic panels out of whatever I could get. One was a memory foam mattress on the bed, which I just leaned up against the wall. You and don't that need did, to sleep. No, and that did a huge amount to kill the, the reverberation time of the room from about sort of 150 hertz up because it's a thick one. Um, and I, yeah, I just use, you know, towels, thick towels put in mm. a, in a panel with some fabric over it. Um, if you're on a budget, whatever you can find really. And, and, and you, yes, if you listen to, to Yesco, he'll say that you shouldn't use towels. You should only really use porous absorption, uh, i.e. rock wall or fiberglass because it's, it's measured and it's proven technology and you can look up the spec sheet and see what the. The, the coefficient is of that particular material. But at the yep. end of the day, it if you can't afford that, then you need to use whatever you've got to, to do it. And you can... Um, the old, Stick you know, the cat on the wall. The old trick recording vocals where you hang a duvet up behind you or, and, a, and another one in front of the mic, you can kill a lot of room reflection by, by, by doing mm. that. So, um, And again, diffusers with bookcases with lots of different sized books. Mm. On the back wall, technically can't be repeatable and kind of measured, but it can be better than nothing. Yeah. Um, so it's yeah, it's about experimenting and just trying trying mm. to get that, yeah. that reverberation time down. Just if you do anything with rock wall in your bedroom or wherever your studio might be, just definitely make sure you clean up afterwards because that shit is itchy. Rockwall rock wall isn't the fiberglass, fi- fiberglass stuff. Is. Yeah. yeah, you do not want to be sleeping on that. Yeah, Rockwall's natural mineral wall. Yeah, um, it's the the yellow stuff that's horrible. That stuff, if you get it on your skin, it's like yeah, horrendous. You, you want to make sure it's wear it's, gloves, wear a mask, all that stuff. Yeah, wear, wear, yeah, of course, wear gloves and a mask. Rockwall can turn a bit dusty after mm. after years, but mm. again, only when you move it. If you're not well, exactly. Um, yeah, there's lots of there's lots of. Um, I people, mean, if, if it's covered by panels and stuff, any air from like circulation from a fan or something isn't going to blow it around. It's only if you take those panels off, then disturbing the dust on the panels. That's when you're likely to see something. Yeah. Um, um, but, you know, this stuff is designed to go in houses. Yeah, that's what it's built for. Um, yes, it's designed to go between a external mm. wall and, a, and the other side of a bit of plasterboard. Mm. Um, but it's, it's, I mean, we've, we've used the, the recycled denim stuff. We tried that trialed that in the speakers mm. and it's just a nightmare it just it doesn't work it all sinks to the bottom within or five falls minutes apart completely. and then falls apart and just gets stuck in the in the spider in the driver and then your driver doesn't work anymore because all the stuff's mm. got sucked into it it's just awful stuff mm. um whatever you do do not put egg boxes on the wall with or without eggs yeah, uh, with eggs is better if you can. <laughs> if you can stick drawing pins through the back of the egg box to keep the <laughs> eggs in that, then at least you've got some diffusion. What about on. like a, a bookshelf or something? With Because yeah. obviously you yeah. could put tons of insulation on each shelf and well, then cover it that's, over. That's what I did during lockdown at, hmm. at home before I realised that there was an empty studio nine miles down the road. and was like, why don't I just go back to the studio? Which I did. But, that, um, but you know, we got an okay video out of it. That's what I did during lockdown. I just got as hmm. many different sized books as I could and stuck them on shelves and just did whatever I could to break up the sound or, or absorb the sound that was, that was happening in the room. And it, and it worked. And it, and it worked really well. Um, yeah. There was... Um, I was going to get a photo up of uh, Mark Clayden's room because he's I just commented that, saying... Just, I bet the horrors of doing my room are all cool for, Yeah, the horrors of doing any room. The next, when we build our Atmos room at the front here, someone else... Someone else is doing that. ...will be coming in to do that. It will not be us because I'm... Yeah. I'm, yeah those, I, I used to enjoy DIY good. until we built this place and it put me off for life. Now even the thought of putting up a shelf yep. is uh, overpowering. Peter Samuelson said, cover your base traps with a thin plastic film before... Putting fabric on um, will stop any. We'll make it mm. safe and stop any. If you're using fiberglass, will stop any stray fiberglass particles ever coming out. And that's absolutely true. And if and a lot of people say, oh, you can't put plastic on it because then it doesn't work. Mm. Uh, well, it only works down to the frequency at which the plastic no longer um, absorbs yeah. or reflects. 
the frequency. So if you're trying to treat 100 hertz, 100 hertz is going to go through a bit of cling film with no problem whatsoever. So, so you don't have to you don't have to worry about it. Hmm. Uh, voiceover Vandine said when I lined the booth with rock wool I sprayed it all with a light coating of hairspray and double wrapped it in weed control fabric before mounting and covering yeah interesting just obviously bear in mind that might be flammable as hell yeah yeah, yeah. hairspray, hairspray is highly would, explosive yeah for, so I don't think I'd use hairspray but you've um, got to be careful with that yeah but if um, it works as some kind of super glue then you know there you go yeah another it would thing, be my first choice another thing to do you can do as well is rather than um so companies like what's the one that Ethan Weiner set up? Real traps. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They use spray glue and spray the fabric, uh, spray fabric. the fabric directly to the uh, uh, spray the adhesive on the fiberglass and then stick the fabric directly to that. And that that does both things. It stops any stray fibers mm. escaping and it also kind of seals it as as well. You have to make sure you don't overcoat it so it doesn't start to come through the the fabric. But that's another way to do it as well. Is use is use spray glue. Mm. Uh, rather than having to staple the fabrics around the frame, which can be a pain. Mm. Uh, do you know what? That's actually one of the parts of building a studio that I quite enjoy, is making the fabric panels. Yeah. That, that's the one bit where I'm like, I could probably do that. Yeah. No, I don't hate that too much. I think Because you see a result, don't you? Exactly. You start to get the panels that's the up. Thing. It's like, oh, it looks like It's a like when we were now. building this place, it's like visually nothing happened for like four months because all we were doing was like ripping apart the outside walls filling them with stuff putting them all back together again and it's like great we've been here for four months and it looks exactly the same as when we moved in um whereas when you're doing stuff like this you're building these panels and you're you know doing all the the decoration for want of a better word it you can physically see it come together and then it's encouraging it's like right the studio now looks cool it's getting there yeah. Um, Cheaper car company says if building your own panels, then should you leave the rock wall in its plastic wrapping? Lots of people, lots of studios we've done, and lots of people who's, who we've helped with the acoustics, we've got just the rolls of the cheap, fluffy mm. stuff um, and literally just wrap those, not open them or anything, just literally wrap those rolls in fabric and stuck them in the corners. As and base traps. Yep, and they've, and they've worked. So, yes, you yes, can. Yes, you can do yeah, that. As long as the packaging, as long as you want that sort of depth of. of mm of treatment and then roman said i bought the panels no nerves for messing with mineral wall etc and yeah that's the thing if you've got the budget to buy like gik acoustic panels or something you're going to get a good result because you know it's it's all measured stuff it's designed for certain applications and then you can just kind of pick and choose what you use as was shown in chain's room exactly but if you're doing them yourself as long as you take you know sensible safety precautions you wear you wear a mask if i'm dealing with rockwall the brand rockwall i won't wear gloves because i just do all the time (laughs) because it's not itchy it's not an irritant Mm. it's it's mineral wool it's not fiberglass the fiberglass is itchy and if you get it in your clothes you're 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 itching for Mm. for ages and it's really difficult to wash out um but yeah wear a mask because you will get some some dust from it um but you know you'll see lots of people panicking about handling the rock wall and then they'll just go and cut on a table saw just rows and mm. rows of mdf mm. strips with no protection whatsoever and that's yeah the amount more of crap dangerous. that comes off mdf that is, is unbelievable. far more dangerous to your health than the than the the, the insulation is yeah uh what is a decent mounting method assuming this is for fabric panels and kind of insulation and stuff like that i mean what we've done in here is panel pins well, we've, Just into yeah, the... we've we've done it like you do a proper studio. So we've got we've built the um, imagine a stud wall. You've got the studs, and then you've got the plasterboard in your house. Yeah, we've got and and whatever else we've got the plasterboard the other side of the stud. So when we've finished building the room, all the plasterboard and everything is on the outside, and we've got all the studs on the inside. So you then line all that with in- insulation up to in this case, it's pretty much six to eight inches. Mm. all over a lot deeper at the sides it's up to a meter at the sides uh so you stuff all that with insulation and then you cover the whole thing with fabric and that's your studio if you're building a domestic room you can't really do that because you've got to build a stud wall inside your room uh so you build you build Mm. panels you build actual acoustic panels and then you've got to hang them up to the wall and i think the easiest way to do it is um is french cleats if you're building them yourself which are basically just a strip of wood with an angle on it and then a strip of wood with an angle the other way that you literally plump the panel onto and then the two angles fit together like that and then it doesn't Mm. it doesn't come off the wall but if you want 
your acoustic treat if you want to get the most out of the acoustic treatment you need to space it off the wall so for ceilings i nearly always hang it on hooks or, or wire um the sort of galvanized wire they use for fencing with the turnbuckle tightening things so as you can adjust the height up and down and then on the walls what i'll do is if i want a six inch base trap spaced two inches off the wall i'll just build a eight inch deep frame and then just put leave two inches at the back of it mm-hmm. um free so you get your six inches of insulation at the front and then you've got an air gap on the panel but it just it, the panel doesn't look as though it's spaced off the wall it just it just hangs on the wall on the french yeah fleecy things um, there are a couple of people saying that changing that that leaving mineral wall inside the vacuum pack boxes changes its density and thus absorption response and that is true but one of the benefits of doing it still in the bag is it's a five second job to test it depends you know if yeah it, it depends what you're using if you're using the 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 rigid fiberglass or rigid rock wall panels then it doesn't expand when you open it yeah it's four yeah, inches it's thick, loose, whether it? it's yeah four inches thick whether it's in the pack or whether it's out of the pack if you're using mm. the fluffy stuff then the fluffy stuff does expand mm. when you because it's designed as thermal insulation not acoustic insulation so they stuff it in as tight <laughs> as they can for transportation um but then you start, you know, then you need to um, start looking at the gas flow resistance and stuff like that exactly, at a yep. certain density. Yep. Um, well, that's that, that's exactly what those guys said. The, the AF, AFR airflow resistance values are going to change. Yeah, and then um, you're into proper engineering. Yeah, and uh, that's why you start with a rectangular room. <laughs> so there we go. Um, yep. So I'll be done. I th- I think we've covered a lot of things this evening. Um. I've actually quite enjoyed this live stream. We had no plan, and it's ended up being rather interesting. Yes, just one comment from Roman there. He says, don't go the Eric Valentine road. It's way over-engineered. A rectangular base trap with the same size would give the same result, or if not better, because uh, Eric Valentine is using tube traps, and the problem with tube traps is they're circular, so they're Mm. thick in the middle, but they're not thick at the the edges, depending on where you put them. So, yeah, I think he would have been better with... Uh, just standard absorptive mm. panels, but there we go. Hey, hell. So right. I need to go to bed. Yes, I need to get some food. So let's wrap go it to up. Bed. Yeah. So thank you everybody for watching this unplanned live stream. I've actually really enjoyed it. We've yeah, covered have, quite yeah. a few varieties of topics, um, and Mark only ditched me once throughout the live stream, but I feel he's about to again in a minute for a drink. Yes, so. so on that we'll go thanks for note. watching we'll see you next week yes we will see you next week goodbye goodbye bye <laughs>